Some of the best things can be found in some of the most unexpected places. Hi everyone, I'm Luke Filmboss, and today I will be reviewing Thor. I love the fantasy aspects in this movie. I just love the lore, all the architecture, the planets. Asgard is visually stunning. I love the creatures and everything fantasy about this movie. It's pretty good stuff, and I just love fantasies, and so that does give Thor an edge when it comes to superhero movies. But it's not an A-list level fantasy like Lord of the Rings or Chronicles of Narnia. And then you have the moments where he's sent down to Earth and that's where most of the movie takes place is on Earth where he's stripped from his powers. And we get some good stuff. We get some decent action scenes. And it's a pretty good comedy. And while it's good, that kind of lessens it for me. Where you have this big fantasy epic that turns into this fish out of water comedy. And a lot of people will use that term fish out of water comedy. Where he's pretty much in a different culture. He's not in his element. And so that leaves for some funny interactions. And there's some good character development. But it's just not as epic and grand as it should be. It kind of becomes a little bit too silly of a movie. And a lot of people like that about Marvel movies. But for me that cheapens the emotion while it still works and they still do have some good payoffs and emotional moments it's just not as good and it lessens the whole fantasy aspect of it I would have liked if they would have just kept it a whole fantasy adventure not even have him come to earth it would have made it a much better movie but because he had to be there for the Avengers it would make sense that he would come to Earth first and he had to uh, live amongst the people and grow attached to them for everything that happens in the Avengers to him to make sense and so in that regard I feel like they did what they had to do in order to make it work. Something I love about this movie that doesn't necessarily make it better is the fact that it acknowledges the fact that Thor and the Asgardians are not gods. There's mention of that the Vikings worship them as gods, but that they're not, and that uh, in Asgard, magic and science go hand in hand, they're the same thing, and I just like that. Also, the fact that Thor is able to be stripped of his power is pretty much as much proof as you need saying that he's not a god, that he can be just dumbed down to a mortal, just like you and me, a human being, and that really does create some good things, some good emotional parts, and some good character interactions where he's just a person. He's interacting with other people as a person, not as a god. And with the Asgardians, they're just another form, another race of people, and they're able to talk to people and themselves as such. Also, I love, there's one thing that I do love in Thor the Dark World, which I'll be reviewing later in my series but Odin literally says in that movie that they're not gods he says it out of his own mouth so anybody that tries to claim that the Marvel Universe still hails Thor as a god no Odin even said it Jane Foster was your typical Marvel female protagonist slash love interest Natalie Portman did great in the role. Natalie Portman is a great actor, and she brings a natural performance. All of her character interactions and all of her actions in this movie just feel natural, unlike some of the other characters in this movie. But she's just another generic girlfriend character like a lot of the girlfriends in these Marvel movies, save for Pepper Potts and Peggy Carter. But something that this movie does that... Liv Tyler didn't get and from The Incredible Hulk is that this leaves off with more for her to do and so she is in other MCU movies and while she hasn't been used to the full potential that she should have she is going to in the fourth Thor movie Thor Love and Thunder where she will be the main character and become a superhero herself and I can't wait for that to be honest she's a great actor and it's a exciting thought that she's finally going to be a hero on the same level as Thor not just the side girlfriend character and finally it's time to talk about what makes this movie stand out above most of the phase one Marvel movies not all of them 
Iron Man was better, and although I haven't reviewed it yet, I will say that the first Avengers movie was better than Thor, but Thor does outshadow the other three movies in Phase 1, and the reason for this is its main villain. Loki is by far one of the MCU's greatest villains, and he's by far the greatest villain in Phase 1. And that started with this first Thor movie. While there is some things in this movie lacking, some things that are great, like the fantasy aspects that aren't to an A-list level, Loki is a great villain. He seems a little bit out of place in the movie because he's just so good. His backstory, his character development, his motivations, his emotional attachment to Thor and his father, everything he does, his plan, what he's trying to accomplish, it's all so great. And it led him to the next movie and the next and the next where he just keeps getting better, not necessarily as a villain, but as a character. And that's how you make a good villain, is you make a good character and then have him do something evil, but in a realistic and understandable way. And that is what makes Loki so good, is that we understand him, we feel for him, we are emotionally attached to him. And I know that some people aren't, but after watching Thor, everything that he does in the Avengers and every other Marvel movie makes a little bit more sense. And I just love Tom Hiddleston's character of Loki. It was just so good. And the final third act is more than just a CGI boss battle. It's a character-driven battle between two brothers and two civilizations. I give Thor an 80% in quality and an 82% in enjoyment for an overall score of 81%. Thanks everyone for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell to help you be on the lookout for more videos from Luke Filmboss.